Today on Skyrider Limited, we're hearing some stories from a friend. Welcome back to Skyrider Limited, everybody. I'm Jesse, and today I'm joined by Alan. Uh, and Alan brought us some kites to check out. Hey, I'm Alan Carter. Been flying kites for about 25 years, uh, since the late 90s. And I wanted to tell you about a couple of different kites and kind of the personal story about how I got them, the other kite people that were involved with them, and what the kites have meant to me. This one is a HQ MIDI. These were made in 1998. The design is by Chris Matheson, who was famous for his uh, sandpiper kite and then a smaller version called the MIDI sandpiper. Mm -hmm. This one was a evolution of that MIDI sandpiper into just the MIDI. It was made by HQ. Um, these were kind of a legendary kite in the late 90s that people started to modify them. A gentleman named Al Stroh had a great blog about modifying MIDIs, reframing them, higher performance, all that kind of stuff. So it was a great kind of template kite for that it's kind of very work. transformative. Yeah, yeah. So everybody had known about them, but because they only made them for one year, they, they sold a lot of them, but still they weren't generally available. Right. But they started to become a little more available. And people were talking about them online. And 2004, I had a terrible day at work. And I come home and there's a long skinny tube waiting for me by the door. I'm like, I didn't order anything. My friend Clint Forrest from Oklahoma, I don't know if Clint's still with us, haven't heard from him in years, was one of the very active people in the kite forums, a great kite flyer, never met him personally. I opened the box, there's a note from Clint saying, hey, Alan, I thought you might like this. And it was this MIDI. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. So since then, I reframed it, again, using Al Stroh's kind of advice and instructions. This one's framed in 3PT Sky Shark, okay. kind of throughout, except for the upper spreader amazing wind range, amazing performance. There were also some slight, not changes to the bridle, bridle settings that were, that were better, you know. Yeah. I also have one framed in 2PT, which is an amazing low wind kite. Sure. They're tricky enough for my old school style. Yep. A really great seven foot kite. This one is very, very used and abused since I got it sure. well, 20 years ago now, 2004. Yeah. Yeah. It's been really probably more hours on this kite than any other single kite I own. Sure. Um, so the story of somebody just sending me a kite out of the blue, the story of it being right. my favorite kite, and just the fact that it's got that connection with an old friend that I never met. That's um, really cool. And, uh, yeah. And they're such good-looking kites, too. It's such a great graphic. Yeah, and definitely. And this is early Icarix, right? That's the the old uh, dot, um, yeah, like with the rectangle rec pattern. Rectangle pattern. Yeah. It's, it's held up well color-wise. Yeah. You know, it's definitely not too faded. Yeah. Um, and pretty solidly built. You know, I've beat the heck out of it. Um, it's showing its age. But, you know, they're a great... Aww. Yeah. They're, they're, they're tall enough in the spine to be pretty precise for a small kite. But still, it does flick flax and 540s and fades and all the stuff I like to do. So as an all-around kite, especially for small fields, um, short lines. Sure, you know, it's, yeah, yeah. It's been one of those yeah, things I bet it's really you can kind of fly anywhere. I bet it's really at home on like 75. Yeah. yeah. So wherever you are, thanks, Clint. You're the man. And certainly my favorite kite of all time. I Very don't know, cool. thousands of hours. I tried to add it up once, but it's just ridiculous numbers of hours on right. a kite like this. Love At that. one point, I bought several more of them, yep. just in case. Just, just in case. And then, of course, I realized these weren't falling apart or anything, and I'm getting older, I'm not flying as much, so I sold off the extra ones. But, yeah, MIDI, cool. HQ MIDI. If you can get one, and if you can frame it three PTs, it's an excellent kite. Okay. Very cool. <laughs> well, hey, we'll uh, we'll switch kites here, yep. and we'll, uh, we'll see another one. All right, next kite. So we've got something uh, really pretty here. So, so we got sun coming through it. Yeah. Yeah. That's That's the thing. This one has always been the, the backlit kite. Um, the story behind this one's another kind of personal story. Um, in Washington State Kite Festival in 2000, I had a house to share. So I put the word out, who wants to share a house for the festival? And Peter Bettencourt and his wife Ellen said, hey, yeah, we'd like to come. Um, and so, you know, meeting Peter, who was a kind of a legendary kite maker, even by that point, um, and they're just really cool folks. So we spent the week and hung out. I flew a bunch of his kites. And shortly after that, he made me this kite. Very cool. It's a stiletto, which was kind of an unusual kite for him. It was a little bit more yeah, of old school. More of the bad boys and stuff that people know. Yeah. It has a little bit shorter standoffs, you know, a little bit shallower sail, behaves a little bit like an old, more old school kite, and it, it, it's a little flatter. This particular one, though, again, is framed in three PTs. There's a theme here. Um, I really love three PT kites. Most of them were framed very heavy because he thought they would be flown sort of old school. Lots sure. of tip stabs, yeah, yeah, yeah. And stuff like that. Sort of pushed. Being 3PT, this one is a UL kite. Very, very low wind range because it's got so much sail. Um, this one was the kite that I picked up on my first date with my future wife. She mm -hmm. had heard about this kite stuff. And we picked it up and went to the beach and flew it. 
again, for years, this was my favorite flight. I don't fly it as much as I used to, but between 2000 and 2004, like when I got the middies, yeah, this one is absolutely shredded. You know, there's yeah. just holes all in the leading edges and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And it still flies beautifully. If you look at it up close, it's ugly. Um, but especially, but backwards. it kind of also isn't like, yeah. like I can see the wear and tear, but yeah, like the Apple case held up beautifully. Sure. Peter, Peter stuff. I mean, he did so much of that, like Apple K on Spork. He was one of the original, like yeah. big images on Spork height guys. And it's always so yep. pretty. And there's such a cool, like build details. Like he was playing with the cross, uh, cross hack bridles yep. and stuff. Yep. No. So this one has been like a, a real big deal kite. I flew Peter Betancourt kites for competition for a couple of years. A whole set of bad boys. I still fly the vanishing. Point I was about to ask main. if you had a vanishing still. Yeah, the vanishing point is, is, is my main super low wind kite. Um, such an, such an incredible yeah. SUL. But this one with the, with the history of it, it definitely was one of these things and um, definitely flew the heck out of it. Now, when I bring it out, it definitely is kind of a memory kind of kite. For sure. Yeah. But it also flies really low. So I, I've had it out here in the mornings when the wind's been light. So yeah, another one with a, a really personal story. And I've you know kept up with Peter over the years. Probably ordered twenty different kites from him. You know, uh, one he's of those still people. building. He's not still building. He's retired from it. Um, as sport kiting kind of slowed down, and his special old school sort yeah. of sport kites, the wire noses and yeah, stuff, they became sort of anachronistic. And yep. you know, it just wasn't as much. Um, so yeah, he had gradually faded out from it. But uh, definitely a unique character, and certainly. In, in sport kiting, it was one of those evolutionary yeah. builders. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. And made just beautiful stuff like this. For sure. Yeah. Very cool. Well. Right, next kite. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so this is, uh, this has got to be one of the more iconic prism kites. Yeah. So and, and you've brought us a prophecy. A prism prophecy. Yeah. And another personal story about this one. Certainly, it's an, a bit amazing kite. Um, but I started competing in 99 and in. I, I kind of stopped in 2003, and then 2004, a friend of mine said, you know, I'd really like to try flying pairs. So we're like, okay, this season we're going to do it. We pulled together all of our different kites mm -hmm. and tried each one to see what should we, and we had no kites what, in common. pairs? Yeah. We had no kites in common. Sure. So we couldn't just pick two. Right. So we tried a whole bunch of them. He had this rain, a rainbow prophecy just like this, and we decided, you know, they make such a big statement in the sky and all that. We should do rainbow props. But at that point, I had no money. I was raising the little kids. And this was a four hundred dollar kite. Sure. And he's like, no problem. Next week, he shows up at the field with a brand new rainbow prophecy. So my friend Laurent Mull, wherever you are, I know you're still out there, Laurent. Thank you for the kite. I've known I've thanked you for it many times. So he bought the prof. We also borrowed a, a vapor, and then we had some vented tram Montanas for the high wind. But really, we flew all of our gigs that season with this kite. Um, it was really a good Paris kite. Very stable. Very spectacular. Mm -hmm. Since then, of course, I've flown the heck out of this one. It's been torn apart and yeah, it, together. But I've also had it's got some miles on two it or three sure. more prophecies, even a UL, beautiful purple UL. But as time went on, I didn't fly those very much, so I sold them on. This sure. one, given the fact that it was a gift and I flew a season of pairs comps on it, sure. uh, it'll never go away. Yeah. And when I do bring it out, you know, it's a, it's such a unique kite. It does the most amazing 540s. Yep, you know, right. It is just a flat spin kite like a lot of the older prisms are. Oh, yep, but yep, with yep. this incredible presence it in the sky. It goes really beautifully, yeah. too. And, and, you know, I don't know if you can see on the camera. It is huge. I yeah, mean, I mean, look, look I always thing. use myself as a ruler, so I'm about 5'8". Alan's a little taller than me. The nose is at my at my head. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, yeah. Is, it is a serious piece monster of kite. Monster of a kite. Just, I mean, just monster of a kite. Uh, uh, and, they're great. like, the funny thing was... Prism also made one of the more bought, uh, like, roll bags, like, to transport kites. Prophecies don't fit in their bags. The original run of bags were too short for the prophecy leading edges. Yeah, big kite. Well, big, you know, it's interesting, kite. to bring it back to the present, I flew one of the, the new um, Prisms, the Synthesis. Synthesis. Great and somebody, the guy who handed it to me said, you know, you're going to be familiar with it because it kind of feels like a smaller prophecy. It does. A lot. And There's it a has lot of a prophecy lot of similar... and illusion in and so, it. So, yeah, exactly. It's like a bigger illusion, smaller prophecy. Yep. So it's got some of that feel. So yeah, definitely my my uh, my kind of old school kite that it has a lot of meaning to it. And I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a spoiler out on Mark. He's got another new kite with him here. I heard it was a smaller lightwind kite. It is a smaller lightwind kite. Bigger than the 4D. Bigger than the 4D. And I can actually see it from where we're standing. It's kind of a bright color. It's kind of a very bright color. And I'm gonna try and see if I can get Mark to talk about it. And if you see that, you'll see that here on Skyrider so Limited. Does it have a legacy of like the Ozone? I don't know, but I'm really hoping he'll tell me. Ah, I heard a name. I it. heard a name, kind too, of, that kind of, of rings. Yeah, yeah. The prism names kind of go. Prism does. Mark does like his, 
<laughs> Mark does like his themes, doesn't he? <laughs> so, well, hey, Alan, thank you so much for sharing these with us. I really appreciate it. Sharing the channel. history. Yeah. Thank you. And, hey, and, thank you for all you're doing with this channel. Uh, it's been a blast. I'm so glad. I'm so glad we're starting to get these stories into it and it's not just me anymore yeah because i've got a lot of history but there's a lot more than just me out there you yeah. thank you to all of you for watching and subscribing sharing and liking and we will see you out there